Okay, so the so let let K be a field and G a linear algebraic group over K. Um, and then also let I be an integer, I be a non-negative integer. So um, in this situation, we can we can construct a, a G representation V, a linear G representation V over K, um, such that um, such that there exists some non-empty uh, G stable open subscheme of V. Um, such that the co-dimension of, so this open subscheme equal to U, and the co-dimension of the complement of U is bigger than, than I, so it's at least n plus one. And also uh, there exists a G torsor uh, U, Maps to U by G, G torso. Um, okay, so th this can always be arranged, and then um, in many ways actually, and then the definition due to Totaro in the paper in his paper of 1999 is is the so the idea is to define the Chow the Chow group of co-dimension I cycles on BG modulo rational equivalence as the Chow group of co-dimension I cycles on U modulo G. Okay, so this is rational equivalence. And U modulo G is, is a smooth variety, so, this, so we can credit this by co-dimension. Um, and the definition, uh, this definition uh, involves the choice of V and, and U, but it, it actually does not depend on, on this choice. And then, then one defines, okay, so that's the definition, the one defines the uh, child ring, child star of PG as the direct sum uh, for i greater than or equal to zero of all this child, child i of bg. And this is, uh, well, it's, a, it's an abelian group, but it's also a graded ring. So this is graded by co-dimension. And it's, uh, it's a ring because if I, if I approximate bg by some u modulo g with, for some very big i, then um, if, I have two, if I have two cycles, I can view them in this very, in this very precise approximation. I can multiply them elements of the Chow ring of this approximation. And that gives me a, a well-defined product on this on this kind of thing. Okay, let me, let me just give a, an example which is going to be important in, in the future. So the, the first example I want to see is G equals GM, so the multiplicative group. Um, so there is an action, an interaction on A, say, I plus one. Um, say, okay. And so that's the multiplication. Multiplication. And so the U in this case is just uh, AI, AI plus one minus the origin. And the U mod G is just PI. So this is the GM torsor that we're considering. And so the chow, the chow ring of, of PI is ZH. Uh, model H I plus one. And so we get, by following the, the definition, we get that the Chow ring of BGM is, oh yes, yeah, so H as, as degree one, of course. And so the Chow ring of BGM is ZH. The polynomial ring in one variable and the variable has degree one. Okay. Um, So formally, um, this this should remind. There you go. So formally, 
this this is a manifestation of, of this intuitive fact that BG M is somehow equivalent to P infinity. Okay. Um, and this, of course, can be made, uh, as I said, it's not precise, but it can be made precise using, uh, using the, uh, the work of Moral Vovotsky in, uh, again, 99. Specifically, chapter, chapter four of that paper. Um, and, and actually, this, using this paper, one can give, uh, one can also define the child groups, but it, it, it's, it's the same definition. The child groups of PG, but it's, it's again the same definition. Okay, so, the, so this was this is the case of a torus of rank one, so GM. Now let's consider the case of a split torus of of any rank, so let of an arbitrary rank, so let T be uh, a split K torus. So this just means that there is an isomorphism with T and GM uh, to power N uh, over K, and is the rank of the torus. Then, in, then there is the character lattice of T, which is defined as it's the group of homomorphisms from T to GM. So this is, if we fix an isomorphism of T with GM to the end, then this automatically induces an isomorphism with, with the character lattice with some Z to the um, so character lattice. So let's see the. So this example is is very similar. It is just a small generalization of the previous example. It's just the showering of of a, of a torus. Uh, but I want to describe it in a more intrinsic way because it will come up. Uh, it will come up later. So the, so if g equals t, then let's just take um, let's take um, so let v be a g representation, um, and u. Um, again, a non empty open sub, uh, sub scheme, which is G invariant, and so let's say um, open G invariant sub scheme, um, such as the co dimension of the complement is, is at least two, and, and there exists a, G, a T tor, sorry. U goes to U goes of T. Okay, then um, in this situation, then we have, we can construct a map from a group of homomorphism from the character lattice T hat to uh, chart one of BT, which is just chart one of U modulo T, by definition. And so if we have a character chi, we can send it to, uh, yeah, to the class of the big divisor um, associated to, to the line bundle L chi, uh, say U cross A1, uh, yeah, modulo T, goes to U modulo T. Okay, so, so this is a line bundle where T acts on U acts via the representation, on A1 it acts via the character chi, and then on the product it acts using the diagonal action. So this gives a line bundle over U mod T. Uh, the, the wave divisor is a, a cycle of dimension one of U modulo T. So it's uh, by definition, its class is a, an element of chow one of BT. So this is a well-defined map. One can check that this is a group homomorphism. And it's actually a group isomorphism. And not only that, but it induces an isomorphism between the symmetric algebra on T hat and the chow ring of BT. Okay, so this is a ring of isomorphism. Um, it's an isomorphism of graded rings if if he has as as you want. Okay, and this again informally, this is this corresponds to the fact that uh, if we pick a basis, then BT becomes equivalent to this infinity to the n, and and so. Uh, for these kinds of varieties, one has a Kuhnet formula. So this is a manifestation of Kuhnet formula, if you want. Um, okay, so so much for split. Um, okay, 
this over section two. So section, in section two, I want to describe some, some computations, previous results that are not, not related to this paper, but I think they are important in the context of showerings of, of PG. So computations. So first of all, for so if G is finite, there's a lot of work uh, on, on, the, on the charming of PG. And for example, um, uh, say work on the charming of PG has been done by many authors. For example, um, Gio, uh, and Yagita, and, and many others, but uh, and uh, so the uh, reference for this is uh, Totaro, Dinukai Totaro, on group homology and algebraic cycles. Um, okay, but I'm more interested, for this talk, I'm more interested in um, infinite groups, so computations for infinite groups. So if you have the groups. Um, okay, so I want to describe some showerings of some infinite groups such as GLN, SLN, and so churn classes come up. So I would develop them by CI, and CI as always has the So for example, uh, the showering of BGLN is C, uh, C1, C2. CN, the showering of BSLN is Z of C2, C3, CN. The showering of um, BSP21 is Z of C2, C4, and C21. And these, these have been computed by Totaro, all, all three have been computed by Totaro in, uh, in, in 1990, it's the same, the same paper. Um, okay, and then, well, I, I don't want to to have too many of these, but I, let me just mention that. Um, so for the computation for the chowering of the orthogonal group for any n and the, the chowering of uh, BSON for, for odd n, yeah, odd n. I've been done both by Totaro and by Pandai independently. Uh, and then Chow star Showering of B, S, O, N for even N has been, uh, has been kept even. It's been carried out by fields. Um, then the, there are many calculations, but I think that maybe the most important ones are PPG3 by the source and then completed by Visterly. Um, then the, the Chow, well, just the Chow group of BGLP where P is a prime by Vistoli. So the computation is just additive. And I think it's, um, so it, it completes the calculation of, of the multiplicative structure for BGLP. And in, in general, it reduces the, the problem of computing the, the, the product, the multiplication to our problem in invariant theory. It's a, it's a difficult problem in that. And then, and then maybe let's mention that the chowering of some exceptional groups, so work on chowerings of exceptional groups, exceptional groups, has been carried out by, by Gio and Yagita in many papers. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the picture for split groups. But, uh, Split limit groups, but the, today uh, I'm more interested in the non split case, uh, which is the, for which complete calculations seem to be much, much harder to get. So, it's uh, in the case of non split groups, one tends to concentrate on 
local dimension. Um, and so the, the first case to start for uh, non split groups is the case of tori. So let me talk about that. So the case of algebraic tori, not necessarily split. So three algebraic tori. So in K is the, the fixed field, and uh, K, KS is the fixed separable closure of K. And then gamma is the Galois group, the absolute Galois group of K. So, um, okay, so this is this notation I will keep uh, throughout the rest of the talk, and then so now let's let's consider let's pick a uh, torus T. So torus, by torus I mean it's a linear algebraic group, and then if I base change to the separable closure of K. Uh, then it becomes isomorphic to a product of some number n of copies uh, of the multiplicative group. Okay. Um, then, in this situation, uh, I just want to give some uh, basic notions about why. So, in, in this situation, there is um, a smallest uh, finite field, finite extension, finite field extension. dk over small k, uh, such that um, such that p splits over k. And this extension um, k over k, dk over small k, is uh, is always that one. It's always a that one extension. And one, one says that k is the smallest, or k over k, is the smallest, oh, sorry, it's the minimal, minimal, minimal splitting field. Of t. And the Galois group, gamma, gamma of k over small k, is uh, is called the, the splitting group of of, of T. And of course, if, if a field contains this this BK, then it, it also splits the torus. It's just called a, it's just called a splitting field. Um, so the so gamma the the, Galo group, the absolute Galois group acts on T base change to the separable closure. And so it also acts uh, on the adapter lattice. Um, and then, so, so this means, so this makes TKS hat into a, into a gamma lattice. Oops. Okay. Into a gamma lattice, which means um, well, it's a finitely generated Z free continuous gamma uh, quotient. Um, it's, it's actually discrete, so the actual factors through this finite quotient gamma of BK or small k. Um, Yeah, so it continues where I put the, the discrete topology on the hat. Okay, and then this gives, uh, this association gives, uh, this functor gives us uh, an anti equivalence of categories from the category of KTORI to the category of analysis. And, um, well, let the torus T correspond to um, the character lattice with this gamma action that I just described. And by, um, a quasi inverse of this is taking a gamma lattice M and considering spec of K, KSM, K, 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 K
So this is the group algebra. And then take a gamma invariance and take this back to. Okay. Um, so let me give an example. So that I can also start with examples of the gel um, ring of some of these, for example. So the, the simplest case, which is not the split case, is the quasi-split or quasi-trivial case. So let's take E over K be a set finite separable extension. And big K over small K at the Galois closure. And let uh, T, so the torus, be the pay restriction along this separable extension of GM. Um, and so the gap for that is isomorphic to Z of gal K over K modulo gal K over E. Okay. And so this is the permutation lattice. Gamma lattice. So the group gamma acts so gamma of big K over small K is a quotient of gamma, so gamma acts by multiplication set to the left. And so it also acts on this, uh, this call set. And so this, so this means that this lattice has a basis which is permuted by, by gamma. And this is, this is exactly what it means to be a permutation gamma lattice. We have a basis which is permuted by the group. Um, and in this case, we, there's a nice uh, answer for what the charring is. So the charring of Bt is isomorphic to the charring of Bt is gamma invariance. Okay, and by what I said in, in the second example, this is uh, the symmetric algebra on Tk sub. Ks or K sub, I mean the same, uh, gamma invariance. Okay, so the this is um, so this this is as good as it gets. Uh, for child, child chains or child groups, because this means that uh, we have um, BT satisfies Galois descent for child groups. So this is the best possible scenario. Uh, and in, for, for example, it allows us to, to if, if we know the if we know the torus, so if we know the lattice and the action on the lattice, then uh, we can compute this. Um, so, for example, um, if the E over K has to be N and, and that the Galois closure, BK is always the Galois closure of E, is SM, so the color group is SM, so this is full symmetric, the, the generic case. Um, then, um, then Chow star, Chow, the Chow ring of BTKS is Z over X1 Xn and the Chow ring of BT, well, where Sn acts by permuting the indices. So the Chow ring is just Z over sigma 1 sigma n, where sigma i are the uh, elementary symmetric polynomials uh, of the XI. Okay, maybe I should spend a few words on why, why this is this isomorphism is true. So the second isomorphism is the is the, is example two that we've seen. And, and the fact that the example two is so canonical that it's actually becomes canonically variant. Um, and then the, the first part is Essentially, because the for for so BT is is can be approximated by so those varieties U modulo T that are used so so the varieties approximated U modulo T that we need to to compute the child groups. Are, have this form. By, um, it's approximated by bigger extensions of Pn, where n becomes, uh, and again, as long as that's choice. So, 
city where I become larger and larger. And for these varieties, um, so the channel motive of these varieties is uh, has been computed, and it's uh, it's a direct sum of uh, channel motives of separable extensions. Oops, I don't know what happened here. Sorry. Um, so the Dijon motive of these big restrictions is the text sum of, uh, of twists of motives and several extensions of spectral of separate. Federico, we can't see what you're writing. Sorry about that. Did I? So there's some, there's some problem. It's a screen problem. Sorry about this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, that's fix it. Okay, sorry. Does it work now? Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Um, so the channel model, I was saying, the channel model of the very restriction of PI is the, the direct sum of twists of motives of spectral stable extensions of K. Okay. And, and for these, we know that Galois descent holds. Okay. Okay, and then one can, you know, one, if one chooses an extension with a certain Galois group, one can compute the channel ring. About the corresponding value restriction by doing something bad here. And in particular, this ring is always torsion free because it's contained in some polynomial ring, obviously. Um, okay. So, what about arbitrary fee? What about arbitrary t? So an arbitrary torus t, not necessarily quasi split. So in general, we know that shall zero of bt, well, that's always z, but that's uh, not surprising. And then shall one of bt is well, it's isomorphic to shall one of bt ks uh, gamma, gamma and bs. Uh, so this is um, tks hat. And this is the fact that this uh, this is Gallo descent for the one. So mo um, model the identification of this Cha one with the Picard group. So this is this is the fact that the the for varieties smooth varieties with a rational point uh, we have descent for the Picard group. Uh, okay, and, and but already Cha two. Of GT, well, we there's not there's not a nice formula for this. Um, uh, it's, it's it's already much more difficult, and this is a general phenomenon. So for even even for smooth projective varieties, let's build this. Even for smooth projective varieties, um, so let's take effects. Is a smooth or even, even projective or with a rational point and uh, variety. Then uh, the, the homomorphism um, from Chow 2x to Chow 2x ks, say gamma, is in general. Is neither injective nor subjective. Injective nor subjective. In general. And actually, the study of this map is uh, so this is Gallo descent, this would be Gallo descent for cremation two cycles, uh, model rational equivalence. And it's, uh, it's there's a, a very big literature that studies this problem when it holds, when it doesn't hold. Uh, Examples of very sorts, um, and let, so let's look in, in in our situation. So 
the case of BP, then we, we can use a norm argument to study the kernel. Um, the kernel of the of the map, of the base change, uh, of the full back map, which out of BT, which out of BT except KS. And yeah, I could no need to put gamma invariance since I'm considering the kernel, but this is equal to uh, chow 2 bt portion. Okay, so, um, so the fact that, chow, that the torsion is contained in the kernel, well, this is clear because this, the over the separable closure, this is torsion free. And on the other hand, if something goes into, if some class in chow 2 bt goes to zero, in uh, when this changed to base set, then it goes to zero after some finite separable extension. Um, and then I apply the norm and I get that the, if the, if the extension is D, then D times the class is going to be zero in chapter of BT. Okay. And uh, so this group, chow 2 of BT portion, has been studied. So it says, um, plays an important role in a, in a paper by uh, in a paper by Pinson and Mercurio. Uh, and has been further studied by has been further studied by Mercurio. in uh, 2019. Okay. And so in, in the paper of Pisa and Mercurio, that's uh, not the, it's not the main factor, but it definitely plays an important role. So let me, let me say um, some of the things they proved about this group in the form of a theorem. Uh, so they, pro they proved the main, the main general result that they proved is that the Chow 2 BT torsion is, is a finite, which a priori is not obvious, could be, could be very, very big, and two torsion. So two times the group is zero. And they also proved some. Vanishing result, so chow 2 of BT torsion equals zero when, uh, when BT is weak rational. So this means, um, so this is equivalent to saying that um, the dual torus is, is weak rational. And um, so the dual torus is the torus whose character lattice is the, the dual of the character lattice of, of T. It's the final twice amorphism. Um, and then, okay, so, so they, these are some of the things they said about this group. And then they, they left a question. Uh, the question is, uh, well, does there exist a field K, do there exist a field K and a K torus T uh, such that uh, chow 2 of PT torsion is, is different from zero. Okay. So that's the result that I want to Talk about today is that the answer is yes. So this is okay. okay, so this is section four. And okay, so the so in order to to discuss the example, I need to um, to talk about the work of Mercuriev in, in chapter, uh, in, in, uh, sorry, in, in the paper of 2019. 
Um, okay, so this is a, so if, let's say a G is a finite group, and L is a G genus. Okay, then we have the, the exterior square of L, which is the quotient of the tensor product by elements of the form X tensor X, where X is L. Then we have this uh, slightly less known <coughs> gamma square model, which is L tensor L, um, modulo X tensor Y plus Y tensor X, where X and Y are in L. And so, if, so you could do this for any, for a module over any ring, and if the if two is invertible in the ring, then these two objects are the same. But, um, but since two is not invertible in Z, these two objects are different. So let me denote by X, so let's wedge by the class of x tends to y in the exceeds square and, and by x tends to x star y, the class in the square. And then the relation between these two is, uh, is, is explained by the, by the following sequence. Okay, so where, where it's a short exact sequence, it's a G equivalent short exact sequence where X goes to X star X. Okay, what is this two torsion? X tends to uh, star X is not zero, but it's, it's two torsion because I can put X equals Y in the definition here. And then here I can send X star Y into X wedge Y. Okay. And this, this sequence is split as a sequence of uh, abelian groups because uh, the exterior square is uh, free as an abelian group. But it's non split as a G equivariant short exact sequence. And in particular, we, there, there will be this uh, connective homomorphism. Alpha, which is going to be important. Okay, let's add this. Okay, so this one can do for any lattice. Now let's, let's start with a M. Another genus. And let's say, let's take um, zero goes to Q, goes to P, goes to N, goes to zero. Uh, this is a Kofflask solution. So this means that P is permutation and that Q is Kofflask, which means that H1, HQ is zero for any subgroup of H of G. Okay, and then we can define um, phi of GM as um, the image of alpha Q. Okay, so this, I apply the short exact sequence, which was written with L, I apply with L equals Q, I get this image, that's my, that's the, that's this abelian group that I, it's a two-torsion abelian group that I, that I could reconstruct. And one has to check, of course, that this is not, that this is not, uh, doesn't depend on the choice of a fast resolution, but this is because any two, if I have another short exact sequence with Q prime and P prime, then Q and Q prime, they differ by some permutation lattice. So they, I can sum to each of them a permutation lattice. And then um, one reduces to showing that, that, the, that alpha Q is zero when Q is permutation. And this is true because when, when L is permutation, the, the short exact sequence is actually G equivalently split. A choice of a basis defines a split. So this is well defined. So the theorem of Mercury in 2019 is that this, so if G is a finite group and M, is a genus. So this is, okay, then, I, then I take a K a field and T a K torus uh, split um, split by some Gallo extension uh, say Gallo. By Gallo extension BK over small K with Gallo group G. And then, and then T hat, TK hat is isomorphic to M as G lattices. Okay, so these are the assumptions. So then, 
Part one is uh, there exists a, a surjective homomorphism from phi gm to child 2 bt version. So this, uh, so this is for, for uh, so I, I'm fixing g and m, and, and then I say that for any k and t, there's always a surjection. And then the second part is I can choose k and t uh, such that the map above is actually an isomorphism. And to, to choose it, basically one, uh, this is the, one, one takes a generic torus, in cut this it's, you know, it's, uh, in some sense, the most complicated torus that one can hook up satisfies this, this isomorphism. So this is, what is interesting about this theorem is that the, uh, many things, but one thing that, that I like about this theorem is that this, uh, they usually, these kind of properties, they only depend on the lattice, but they don't depend on the field, whereas in this case, the uh, two actually depend, depends on the field. And, uh, and this is made striking by the by some other result that Mercurius proves. So, the, so for example, there are some consequences of, of one that I want to mention. So essentially, uh, one can prove vanishing of uh, of total BT torsion in many cases, a large number of cases. Let me just mention one uh, or two. So if the first case is when T is equal to the vertex section of GM and modulo the central, the diagonal copy of GM. Uh, and again, K over K is always gamma. Yes. Um, and the other one is when K, when the characteristic of K is two, and the torus is, is arbitrary. Okay, so this, it's clear that this, this depends also on the field. Okay. Okay, so, so this is the, the work of Mercurial, and then I, I finally want to talk about the example. Okay, seven minutes. So, for example. Um, so again, uh, so to produce an example, I need to find, so I must find G and M, I must produce G and M such that phi of G M is non zero. So I start with a arbitrary G and I construct M and then at the very end, I choose G. So, so let G be any group, be a finite group. And, <clears throat> And let's just fix a numbering of, of the elements of G. Ordering. And then, and then I define M by the exactness of this short ex this, uh, exact sequence. Okay. So, okay, so, so this is a um, sequence of G. Yeah, this is the first. The first element, go, uh, the first map is given by one goes to the sum of all the GIs, common sum of all the GIs. The set, so this is a different sum. And so I, to define the second map, I need to say where the where G, J, comma, zero goes and where zero, G, J goes. So the first, these ones go to the sum of G, J, G, I, all right. And the, the second one goes to the other thing, so um, GI, GJ. Okay, and then M is defined as the co kernel of this map. So the second map here. Um, okay, so that's M. And then, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, let's leave it up. And then for, for any, and then I want to find some, some condition on G that would, that would imply that phi GM is, is non-zero. And that's, this is the condition. So for any subgroup H of G, there's a tau, there's a map, tau H. It's a group of homomorphism, which is defined as 
H2, and this is H2 over HZ. And then, so H1, H0, Z, Z mod 2, the uh, tensor H2, HZ, cap products, this maps to H3, H, Z mod 2. Then I can do a cross section from H to G and go to H3, H3 uh, G, Z mod 2. Okay. Um, oh, oh, Federico, is there a minus sign involved in the... Oh, you're right, thanks. Yeah, there, there is a minus sign yeah. oh, in this. Yeah, because otherwise it wouldn't... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Thanks. Yeah, Thank you. cool. Thanks. Um, not here. I mean, you can choose where, where to put it. Um, and then VG. So, okay, so for any subgroup H, I define these maps. Um, these, these homomorphisms, and then I take VG to be the span of the images. H3G is equal to um, so it's a subgroup, and then there is the other ingredient is the this, the first inner square from H2 of G is equal to to H3. G is in mode two. Um, so, okay. Okay, and then the, 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 the condition is, so if the image of the square one, I'm just looking at this first, so this is the first sphere of square. But it's, I'm just looking at it in degree, in degree two. So if the image of this square, uh, first sphere of square is not contained in VG, then IGM is zero, is non-zero. Okay, and so and so there's we have an example by taking that G for which this holds. Okay. So the so we I need I need to find such a G, and so it, it's so I look um, for such G. Uh, among two groups, there's no, you don't lose anything by restricting to two groups. And um, so if G is abelian, or uh, the order of G is uh, less than 32, then unfortunately, um, the image of square one is, is contained in BG. Um, but if, um, so, so among groups of order 64, um, there is such a G. So uh, we take G, I take G to be the two seal of, of the Suzuki group. SC8. This is a group of order 64. The Suzuki group is much, much bigger. And so it satisfies, um, this satisfies that the image of the, the zero square, the first zero square is not contained in BG. And so the example is taken by, uh, so the example is, is consistent as follows one takes G to be this two zero subgroup. One takes n to be defined by the sequence that I wrote above, and then one takes the generic torus over over with split by g and with this character lattice, and then the example. Okay, so I'll stop here. Thank you for, the, for your attention. Are there any questions? I guess, uh, sorry, go on, go on. Somebody else was speaking. Yeah, may I ask you a couple of questions? First of all, uh, you, the group you have found, is it the only group of order 64 which provides a counterexample? Uh, yeah, so I think, 
Uh, no, there may, may may be some other group. I think uh, after I found that, I I, 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 didn't, I didn't continue because yeah, there are many groups of RS64. Yeah. Yeah, and so the next question, so something more general. So suppose you start your construction with some group G, then you construct uh, the torus T in the way you described, and so uh, then your invariants depend only on G, so to speak. Now replace G with some uh, other group which in the same isoclinism class, so isoclinic to G. Um, did you try to check whether uh, the situation changes or not? In other words, is your invariant, uh, um, uh, say, an invariant of isoclinism class of G? Because if yes, this would help in calculations, say. I, I, I'm yeah, I, I, I think I, I, I tried something like this, maybe not too, too much uh, strength, but uh, I, I couldn't show it. I couldn't. Uh, so I, I can explain uh, one more remark if possible. So uh, the group you used to construct your current example, um, well, appeared in our uh, calculations with our collaborators when we tried to calculate all Bogomolov multipliers of uh, groups of order 64. Bogomolov multiplier is the ramified brow group of the quotient by the action of G on the field of rational functions. And uh, this group was surprisingly also played uh, some particular role in this computation. It was a separate case, say, very separate from other uh, mm -hmm. groups of order 64. Th that's why I'm asking what about other groups and uh, say Bogomolov multiplier is known uh, to depend only on, on the isoclinic class. And that's <laughs> why I'm asking, because in this spirit, it's, well, it's a similar spirit if you wish. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I'll, tr I'll try to do it again. I, I mean, I, yeah, okay, I couldn't you. prove it right. Yeah. Thank you. So maybe the last question, the torus you constructed, well, the group is re relatively small, the order 64, but the torus, if I'm not oh, mistaken, yeah. I tried to compute is of uh, dimension 3,969. Yes, yeah. yeah, so can you uh, expect something smaller? I think, yeah, I think yes. I think we could expect okay. something smaller. So the reason this group is, this story is simple, is easy to work with. I see, I see. Is that the, okay. so basically the dimension does not affect too much. But the nice yeah, thing yeah, about yeah, this is that these, these two things are free as G modules. So you can do easily, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah so that's, that's what makes it easy. Yeah, the rank is very large, unfortunately. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, Bart, did you have a question? I think it sort of got answered, uh, yeah, by, by uh, what Brady's was asking. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. I have a question. Uh, you have examples in which the map into the invariants in the, with the split torus, you split the torus and then you have the invariants on the Galois, Galois groups. You have examples where that map is not so attractive? Um, yeah, actually, I think because that part I think is well described by, yeah, no, I don't have examples of that, but I, because I think that part is well described by the, um, it's the, isn't the image, comp yeah, I, I think this is described in the paper by Winstein and Mercurio. You know, okay. I don't have a specific example though, yeah. Actually, I don't. So, but you know that it's not always subjective. I don't think it's always subjective. No, okay, so. okay, good, thanks. Um, any other questions? Nice talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. So, uh, then... Well, yeah, if there are no other questions, uh, then um, let's thank the speaker again. You can unmute yourself. And